If vehicle safety is important to you, which it should be, then a little bit of research can go a long way. Sure, you can do all the box ticking you want on a specification list to make sure the vehicle has got the latest safety year. But not all vehicles or their systems are created equally, which is where ANCAP comes in. First of all, James, can you explain the types of crash test simulations ANCAP performs? We try and make sure our laboratory tests uh, replicate as much as possible the real world crashes. So we do a frontal offset test simulating a head on collision on a single lane road. Uh, then we look at the frontal offset test. That's looking at restraint systems. We look at the side impact collision. That's also looking at that classic T-bone crash pole test, uh, running off the side of a road, hitting a gum tree or tele telegraph pole. And we also look at pedestrian safety and also whiplash. Clearly not all vehicles have the same level of structural integrity. That's a key point, right? Structural integrity is the most important thing that we need to look for to make a safe vehicle. We've seen significant improvements over the past 20, 25 years. So it's actually very difficult these days to find an unsafe car, but there are differences in how safe it can be. Uh, we should be looking to protect those occupants, but also the people outside the car as well. So much so now that we're looking at trying to avoid the crash in the first place. James, how much weight does ANCAP give these new elements and how do you test them? We look at four elements and they're considered equally. We look at adult occupant protection, child occupant protection, the pedestrian assessment, and also the safety assist technology. That's where we're looking at those technologies, those automated technologies that will help you be a better driver and will hopefully help you avoid having a crash in the first place. With that in mind, what's on the horizon, particularly as we stare at the dawn of the driverless car? ANCAP is really about getting us to the building blocks of full automation. So we're testing at level two automation, things like autonomous emergency braking, lane support systems, that's what we're looking at. But we're going to move that um, in the next few years to um, an extension of that. Things like uh, emergency uh, active steering. Uh, we're looking at intersection, junction assistance, so that people don't turn into each other. They're the sort of technologies that will be part of our protocol in the next few years. But also looking at uh, avoiding those uh, problems like we see with children being left in cars. So things like child detection uh, presence, uh, that will be a requirement from 2022. In those situations, what should consumers be looking for if safety is a key priority for them? People shouldn't have to compromise on safety, no matter what sort of segment, what sort of vehicle um, they're looking to buy out, whether it's a sports car, whether it's a, a utility vehicle, try and buy the safest vehicle that you can afford, safest vehicle that suits your needs. Um, we have 95% of the new vehicle fleet is covered by an NCAP safety rating. So finding a vehicle that doesn't have a rating can be a bit difficult, but if that's the case, um, look for um, a vehicle that's got those technologies that will help you be a better driver and also help other road users as well. It's a very expensive business. It is an investment, but uh, even on an average car, it will cost close to $600,000. To, uh, to establish an ANCAP safety rating. So it is a very costly business and we are a not-for-profit organisation. A lot of people um, think that we might be the regulator. We're not. Uh, we're, we're there to help you and we're here to help consumers. And if you find a car that doesn't have an ANCAP rating, then let us know and uh, we'll give you some advice.